Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you've got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California invites you to Let George Do It. For the kind of driving you do where you do it, your engine needs a gasoline with many different performance qualities. That's why Chevron Supreme gasoline was designed to give you not one, not two, but all eight high-performance qualities. Starting, warm-up, acceleration, anti-knock, vapor lock prevention, mileage, power, and area blending. They're all yours in every gallon of Chevron Supreme gasoline at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. No Way Out, another adventure of George Valentine. Dear Mr. Valentine, I guess I need your help as much as anybody ever did. I'm scared. I'm in something up to my neck and I want to get out of it. But if I do, I'll be killed. And if I don't, I'll probably be arrested. I live at 1003 Ransom Place, but don't come there. Please meet me in Morgan Park tomorrow noon. I'll be sitting on the third bench inside the Rand Street entrance. And please don't act as though you knew me. Or something bad might happen to both of us. Yours truly, Larry Baker. Third bench. Oh, there he is, George. Yeah, must be our boy all right, Brooksy. Let's park on the other end of the bench. Okay. Uh, hello. Hi. Mind if we sit down here? Oh, no, help yourself. Thanks. Larry. That's all right. Oh. You're George Valentine? Yeah, that's right. This is Miss Brooks. Don't look like you're talking to me. Act like you're talking to her. Brother, you are scared. Okay. Brooksy, I'd just like to know what this is all about. I think Larry's going to tell us, George. Yeah, but I got to make it fast. All right, make it fast. But start from the beginning. I will. I was working in a lunchroom, short order cook, making forty-two fifty a week. Yeah, go on. A man who'd been coming in once in a while talked to me one day. Said he was opening up a dry cleaning place. Now, how would I like to manage it? That sounds like a good break, doesn't it, George? At two hundred dollars a week. Wow, I'll say it's a good break. Keep looking at your girl. I don't know who's watching. If they knew I told anybody, they'd kill me. Okay. Brooksy, I wonder why they'd want to kill Larry. I'll tell you. A couple of weeks after I took the job, a fella came in. And said that every few days a man would leave a package at the shop. I was to hide it overnight. And the next day, another man would be in to pick it up. George, that store must be a friend of some kind. That's what I mean. And the man told me if I said anything to anybody about it, the boss would see to it that I'd be bumped off so fast I wouldn't know what... Wait a minute. What's the trouble? That guy walking up this way. Hold it. Make love to your girl. Act like you're engaged or something. Well, uh-huh. this is an opportunity I didn't expect. Put your arms around me, George, darling. Okay. Uh, look, Angel, what's wrong with Santa Barbara for our honeymoon? I know a nice little place. All right, Bunny. I'll go anywhere you want to go. Because any place would be wonderful for a honeymoon as long as I'm with you, Bunny. Gosh, that's well of you, Angel. You're wonderful. Bunny yet. <laughs> Couldn't you think of any other name to we'll call me? We'll talk about the honeymoon later. He's gone, Larry. Yeah, I know. All right, then. Let's have the rest of it. Have you been getting these packages? Not yet, Mr. Valentine. Another man came in yesterday and said the first one would be delivered to me this afternoon at 4 o'clock. That's why I wrote to you. Uh Uh-huh. Well, we'd better be there to see what your man looks like. Uh, What's the address of your shop, Larry? It's 119 Murray Street. But look, you can't be in the shop. They'd suspect something. We won't come in. We'll look on from across the street. Mr. Valentine, I know this is something crooked. And if the police get onto it, I'll be arrested. I tried to quit, but they wouldn't let me. There's no way out. 
This man said I'd have to do what they tell me to, or... Just take it easy, Larry. We'll try and find your way out. Larry, I'm sorry I'm late for your sandwiches, darling. That's all right, baby. I got another half hour before I have to go back and open up the shop. Sit down. Okay, darling. Oh, Larry, what's the matter? Don't look now, baby. But the people on the other end of the bench are Mr. Valentine and Miss Brooks. Oh, you, you've told them? Yeah. I guess they're going to try to help us. Oh. Don't you look either, Mr. Valentine. This is my wife, Sally. Well, I saw her coming up the path, George. She's sweet. He's okay himself, Angel. Yeah, I think we'd better be across the street from Larry's shop at 4 o'clock. <laughs> George. Yeah, Brooksy. Just how long do you think we can sit here in your car in a loading zone without getting a ticket? Just where do you think is a better place to watch what goes on over there in Larry's cleaning shop? Besides, if I get a ticket, Johnson will fix it. What's Lieutenant Johnson got to do with this case? Nothing yet. But I've got a notion that if we can't find some way to help Larry out of his mess, Johnson will have something to do with it. Oh, Larry seems like such a nice boy. I hope Wait nothing... Wait What? That big black sedan that just pulled up in front of the shop. Oh, man getting out with some suits to be cleaned. Oh, but that wouldn't be a package. Larry. Angel, does anyone have to carry a package in plain sight to prove he's got one? Oh, I see what you mean. He's gone in. Yeah, what time is it? It's, uh, five after four. Uh-huh. George, what are you writing? License number of that car. I suspect anyone who goes in there. But, darling, it's a big car. The man's wearing a chauffeur's uniform. Probably someone just sent him in with... With some suits to be cleaned, yeah. That could be a good cover-up if this is a hot racket. What could it be? Narcotics? Narcotics, smuggled stuff, plain payoff. Who knows? He's coming out again, George. Yeah. That didn't take long. Well, he was certainly in a hurry. That's right. Come on, let's get across the shop. George, the suit you brought. Hmm? Oh, yeah. We've got our cover up, too, haven't we? Let's go. There's Larry behind the counter. Looking just as if he'd seen a ghost. That must have been our man, all right. Hello. Oh, hello. Got a suit here to be cleaned. Was that it, Larry? Yeah. Did he bring the package? Yeah. Well, come on, let's see it. No. Look, Mr. Valentine, I know you're trying to help me, but I got to think about Sally. If anything goes wrong... All right, all right. What kind of a package was it? A big envelope. I don't know what's in it. I'm going to do just like they said, because if anything happens... I know what you mean. So we'll try it the hard way. What about this man who hired you to run the place? I don't know anything about him. Well, he must come in and give you your salary, doesn't he? No. He sends it to me in the mail. Uh-huh. What's his name, Larry? It's Hilton. Sam Hilton. That's what he told me. Where does he live? Haven't you got one of the envelopes your pay came in? Yeah. Yeah. I got one in my pocket. Well, come on. Let's see it. Oh, I hope nobody catches me showing it to you. Nobody will. Let's have it. Well, okay. Here. There's a return address, George. Number six, Berwick Towers. Uh-huh. Swanky address, all right. Put that down someplace, Angel. Yeah, I'll get it. Mr. Valentine, what are you going to do? Drop in at Berwick Towers? But don't tell him I said anything. All right, Larry. Go ahead and do just what you were told to do, and I'll see you tomorrow. Tonight, I'm going to pay a little visit to your boss. George, Mr. Hilton isn't home, and I'm glad. Yeah, Angel, why? Because I don't know what you could say to him if he were in. Anyway, why did we have to come tonight? Oh, I don't know. Just a social call. George! Yeah. A man who doesn't lock his door deserves visitors. And uh, with my curiosity... George, we're not going in there. No, we're not. You're going to stay out here in the hall and stand watch for me. Darling, sometimes I think your curiosity... Call out if the enemy approaches, sentry. Please be careful. Now, where's the light switch? Right there. Ah, oh, here we are. Well, nice room. And a nice big desk. Might be just full of information. Uh-huh. Memo. The boss says to stay out of sight until... Hey. Hey, Brooksy. Why'd you turn off that light? I can't I see... I turn it off, George. I'm out here in the hall the way you told me. Hey! Oh, 
George. Darling, it's me. Oh, that sounds just like the girl that called me Bunny this afternoon. Oh, stop. That was because... And according to the grammar I studied, you don't say it's me, you say it's I. Oh, George, at a time like this, oh, are you all right, darling? Oh, sure, Dandy, just fine. Both of my heads are just fine. What happened? I don't know. I heard you ask me if I turned the lights off, and I said I didn't. Then I heard a kind of a, a hollow thud. Yeah, that was on the one head I had then, Angel. <sighs> Didn't you see anybody? No, but I heard somebody. It was dark when I came in the room, but I heard somebody running, and a window slammed. Window? And then I... Yeah, window. That one. Probably leads out to the fire escape. You think Hilton was here all the time, George? I don't think your hoodie hit me. And I also think the man who hired Larry Baker isn't just playing kid stuff. So? So? I'm going to get back to Larry and Sally. Tell them what they're up against. Of course. That's a good idea. Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning? Yes, darling. Or rather, this morning. It's after one o'clock now, and the bakers would be asleep. And besides, I'm a little tired of holding this handkerchief on your head. You'll only need about four stitches. <sighs> okay, you win, Angel. But first thing in the morning, I've got to see the bakers. Because whoever Larry's mixed up with is playing for keeps. <laughs> Yes, just a minute. What do you... Oh, Mr. Valentine. Miss Brooks. Hello, Sally. May we come in? Wait, yes, but I... Don't mind the bandage on Mr. Valentine's head, Sally. Last night he got into a little accident. Oh. Has Larry left for work yet? He... <laughs> Sally, what's the matter? What's happened? Larry's in jail. In jail? Why? The police just called me a few minutes ago. A man was shot in the store and they say Larry did it. Oh, please, Mr. Valentine, can't you help us? I don't know what to do. All right, Sally, all right. <laughs> At this point, I don't quite know what to do either. But I told you both yesterday that I'd help you, and I will. Come on, Brooksy, we got to get down to police headquarters. Turn to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. When you're driving out on the highways this month, you're likely to see an outdoor poster that says, Battery down? We charge them up. And that's Car Saver's way of reminding you, during the month of October, that for fast, efficient battery service, your independent Chevron gas station or standard station is the place to go. If your battery needs a boost, Car Savers are the people to see. Or if your battery has seen better days and just won't take a charge anymore, then car savers are the people to see about a brand new Atlas battery. Atlas is the battery that's packed with power to give you good, fast starting and also supply power for your radio, heater, or other accessories. Atlas batteries are backed by a written warranty that's honored by 38,000 Atlas dealers from coast to coast. And if you're budget-minded like most of us, you'll be glad to know that you can take several months to pay. So next time you're out on the highways enjoying a ride in the country or just taking a short trip in your own neighborhood, look for the car saver sign that says, Battery down, we charge them up. That's your reminder that for all types of battery service, whether your battery needs a drink of water, a speedy recharge, or even if you need a brand new Atlas battery, the place to go is your independent Chevron gas station or standard station. The people you'll see are car savers, the folks who say and mean we take better care of your car. And now, back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. A very frightened young man sends for you because he suddenly found himself right in the middle of some kind of racket. With almost nothing to go on, you set out to help him. And just when you found out that the people he's mixed up with are really playing a rough game, the young man himself is taken to jail for shooting. But if your name is George Valentine, you'd like to talk to your client and find out just what he has to say about it. I didn't shoot him, Mr. Valentine. You've got to believe that. I didn't say you did, Larry. 
But if I'm going to help you, I've got to know what you know. Now, who did shoot him? How can I tell you that? I wasn't there. All right, now, just calm down and tell me what happened, will well, you? Well, I, 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 I... Well, I went in to open up the shop at 8 o'clock like I'm supposed to. When I opened the door, there he was, lying on the floor, groaning and mumbling something about getting a doctor. Uh-huh. What did you do? I... Well, I knew he must be hurt bad. And I knew the fastest way to get an ambulance was to call the police, so that's what I did. I see. Did you know who this man was, Larry? No. Well, I mean, I, I don't even know what he looked like. He was lying face down on the floor. There was blood all around him. And I don't think you're supposed to touch anybody like that until the police come. The police will find out who he is anyway. Oh, by the way, what about the package you got from that chauffeur yesterday? Was that gone when you got to the shop? I had it. You... What? I was so scared. I thought if I left it in the shop, it might be stolen and I'd be blamed. So I took it home last night and kept it under my pillow. I had it with me when I went in this morning. Yeah? Where is it now? Well, it's... Uh, uh, Look, Larry, I know you're frightened about everything. You thought the police might tie up with that, too. But you'd better tell me. Well, before the police came, I hid the envelope under the rug in the shop near the big chair. Uh-huh. Okay, good. First thing I'll do is try to get you out of here. Just take it easy. And I don't want to get out now, Mr. Valentine. Why not? Well, I'm pretty safe here. But if I get out, they'll be after me. I know they will, and I... Valentine. Huh? Oh, Lieutenant Johnson. You've had time enough for the kid. Come on out. I want to talk to you. Okay. Take it easy, Larry. I'll be back. Thanks, Mr. Valentine. All right, Valentine. Come on. The kid confess? Confess? To what? Oh, look, Valentine. I've got a job to do. So have I. Did you locate the Sam Hilton that Baker was working for? No, disappeared. No trace of him. Find the gun that shot was fired from? No, but we will. This Baker had plenty of time to hide it someplace before our men got there. This Baker didn't hide it any place, Johnson, because he didn't do the shooting. Oh, no? Oh, no. Got an ident on the guy who was shot yet? Sure, from his fingerprints. Joe McMath, small town, hood around town. Couple of arrests. Yeah, that makes sense. You, uh, you don't mind if we stop in the receiving hospital and have a look at him, do you? For what? Look, Valentine. You know something you're not telling. Sure I do, Johnson. I know a kid is being framed and you're helping to do it. Now, wait till I pick up Brooks here and then we'll get over to the hospital and have a look at your victim. Yes? Oh, Lieutenant Johnson. This is the room you've got McMath in? Yes, that's right. He conscious yet? Not yet, sir. He's had a sedative. What'd the doc say? Will he live? Oh, yes. He's going to be all right. Bad wound in the shoulder, but he's out of danger. Thanks. Well, you two wanted to see the victim step in. Though I can't for the life of me see why... Thanks, Lieutenant. You're so obliging. Come on in, Brooksy. But, George, I, I don't... I think don't it... care for hospitals either, Angel. Just wanted to prove the man your client shot's still alive, I suppose. Valentine, hey, I... Brooksy. Yes. I know what you mean, Johnson. Hey, hey, wait a minute. What? That hospital nightie isn't quite like a chauffeur's uniform, but you couldn't mistake that face. Hey, Johnson. Look, look, what are you getting at? Oh, somehow we connect that face with a big black sedan. Wait a minute. Yeah, here it is. Would you mind finding out the registration on this license number? Huh? No, look, I'm not the motor vehicle bureau. No, but you might possibly get to be an inspector before you retire for having a wonderful brain. Just check with me at the office when you get the information. That must... I'll get it, George. Okay, Angel. Hello, George Valentine's office. If the job's too tough for you to handle... Oh, Miss Brooks, will you stop that foolish chatter? Lieutenant Johnson. Yeah, yeah, let me talk to Valentine. He's uh, busy right now. May I take the message? All right. That license number your boss wanted traced. Yes? The car's registered to Mike Lazzetti. Mike Lazzetti? Big Mike Lazzetti? Hey, Angel, give me that phone. Hello, Johnson. Yeah? I thought you were busy. I'm going to be in just a few minutes. And, Lieutenant, maybe you will get to be an inspector. George, Mike Lazzetti, the big gangster, he owns the car that brought the package to Larry's shop. That's right, Angel. So it is a racket. Right, a big racket. And you can cross off the narcotics and smuggling. That character is strictly a numbers racket, man. George, where are you going? Brooksy, I got an idea. I've just discovered that Larry's boss isn't this Sam Hilton at all. So, I'm going to a little office back of a large pool room and see his real boss, Big Mike Lazzetti. <laughs> Thanks. Yes. 
Who are you? I, uh, what do you want? Well, uh, you see, I'm new in town, Mike. I just come in from Detroit a couple of weeks ago. Name's Gray. So? Well, i uh, just trying to make a few connections out here, Mike. All of a sudden, I find I'm in a position to do you a little favor. I, uh, hope you'll remember me for it. Anybody does Big Mike a favor gets remembered. What is it? Well, I guess you heard about a friend of yours getting plugged this morning, Mike. A guy named Joe McMahon. Yeah, I heard about it. Too bad. Good guy. Don't know, never met him. But I guess you know the cops are holding a young guy named Larry Baker for the shooting. Yeah? What's it got to do with me? Say, who are you, anyway? I, uh, happen to know one of your boys, Sam Hilton. Yeah? Yeah. I figured I'd tell Sam about this first, but I couldn't locate him. So I thought I'd better get to you fast. Well, come on, what is it? I, uh, still get that favor? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay. The Baker kid says he didn't shoot McMath, and the cops can't prove that he did. But he claims something was dropped in the store this morning that'll prove who did. Huh? <laughs> Look, friend, you say you want a favor from Big Mike, but you tell me nothing. What you say is nothing. Yeah? Suppose this Baker punk says one of your boys did it. Then he's crazy. Sure, sure. He's crazy as long as he's in jail. But suppose he wasn't in jail. Wasn't he? You mean he's out? Not yet, Mike, not yet. But the cops can't get anything on him. They're letting him go. I listen around, I hear stuff, see? I understand he told the cops he'll bring him something that'll pin the rap on somebody. Yeah? He's not out yet, huh? Not yet. The way I get it, they're springing him at 2 o'clock this afternoon. I kind of got an idea he might go back to the shop to get that uh, evidence. Yeah. Yeah, he might do that. Yeah. Well, I just thought you might like to know, Mike. I'll uh, come back later for that favor. And don't forget, boss, the name's Gray. Yeah, yeah, fella. Come back in a couple of days. I'll do you a favor. Thanks. George, you're all right. Step I'm on it, Brooks. Get down to headquarters as fast as you can. I've got to make a deal with Lieutenant Johnson. Well, I tell you, you're mad, and I'm mad to even consider it. All right, Johnson, all right. Now, let me ask you this. Have you got any evidence that Larry Baker shot McMahon? Well, no, not yet, but we will. We can hold him for 72 hours on suspicion. Of assault with intent? To... Yeah, I know. But how'd you like to get the guy who really did the shooting, Johnson, and clean out a big racket at the same time? We're sure I... How? You think it'll work? I don't know, Inspector. Lieutenant. Oh, sorry, just looking at my crystal ball, old boy. You see, I'm going on the theory that a big crook can't afford to leave himself in a bad spot. How about it, huh? Oh, I suppose so. Here's Baker's cell. Good. Hi, Larry. Hi, Mr. Valentine. Come on, they're letting you out of here. That's right. Come on, son. But look, Mr. Valentine, I don't want to get out now. I told you... I know what you told me, Larry. But you're getting out anyway. You're going to leave here at just 2 o'clock. And at 2.15, you're going to be back in your shop. I don't want to go out. Please, can't you understand? I know what they'll do to me. Just a minute. Valentine, you've been hiding something. Who are they? I didn't have any idea until a few minutes ago, Johnson, but I think I do now. And you can't play it any other way. Now, look, Larry, you asked me to help you out of a spot. Yes, yeah, sure, I did, but I... You won't get hurt. Nothing will happen to you. Just go back to your shop. Okay, Mr. Valentine. I'll go back to the shop if you say so. But I'm just hoping I'll be around to tell about it tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. Well, no, uh, I'm sorry. We're not open today. No, I, I don't know if we'll be open tomorrow either. No. I'm sorry. Who are you talking to? Hang up that phone. Yes, sir. All right. Give it to me. Give you what? I don't know what you mean. We're not open. There isn't any money. We... I don't mean money. You know what I mean. Listen, punk... 
You came back here to get something you were going to turn over to the cops. I want it. And don't forget you're talking to the boss. Boss? I, I don't understand. Look, I... don't play dumb because you ain't. Hilton said you was a smart kid. You know what happened to McMath, don't you? Yeah, but... Sure you do. I took care of him because he was holding out on me. I brought him in here this morning before you opened the shop so as I could get the payoff, though. But there wasn't here. He didn't leave it like he said he did. He double-crossed me. You see what happens to people that cross Big Mike? You mean you're the... Shut up. Now, what did I drop in here this morning? What did you find? Give it to me. But I haven't got anything, I tell you. Oh, yeah? Well, maybe this will convince you. Now... Come on, hand it over. Suppose you hold a hand over that gun, Mike. Huh? No tricks, you're covered. Huh? Well, this is a trap. You're right, Mike, it is a trap. And you've already done me that little favor. I'll take the gun. What? You, you said you was from Detroit. Yeah, I know, a little white lie. And the name's Valentine, not Gray. Here you are, Johnson. One shot fired from his gun. And I think the boys in ballistics can tie it up with a bullet that came out of McMath, don't you? All right, all right. So a guy attacked me and I winged him. Self-defense. They can't send me up for that. Oh, yes, they can, Mike, when McMath talks. Thing called assault with intent to commit murder. Oh, in that payoff envelope you thought McMath stole, Mike. Young Larry here hid it under a rug. It's full of names, including yours. So you see, Busty, you don't have to do me a favor. You're going to do everybody a favor by going out for a good long stretch. Mr. Valentine, you mean I'm out of this? That's right, Larry. Oh, that's great. Except I'm also out of a job. I don't know how to tell Sally. Well, uh, don't tell her yet. I've got an idea kicking around in the back of my head that, uh... Well, look, Larry, meet me tomorrow noon on that same bench in Morgan Park, huh? Oh, sure, okay, Mr. Valentine. I'll be there. Compared with premium-type motor oils, as designated by the American Petroleum Institute, new RPM motor oil doubles engine life between major overhauls due to lubrication. Your car needs that kind of protection, for new RPM cuts in half the wear rate of critical engine parts. Get new RPM for your car at independent Chevron gas stations or standard stations where they say and mean, we take better care of your car. Mr. Valentine, you mean... I'm going to get to be a cop? That's right, Larry. At least Lieutenant Johnson has made arrangements for you to go to police school, start out as a rookie. The rest is up to you. Oh, boy, you don't have to worry about the rest, Mr. Valentine. I know I don't. Now, uh, suppose you go on home and tell Sally. I sure will. And thanks for everything. Bye, Miss Brooks. Bye, Larry. Good luck. George. Yeah, Angel. Do you realize this is the same park bench we were sitting on when we first talked to Larry Baker? Hmm. Oh, yeah, sure. George. Hmm? What? Here comes that same man. Where? Oh, no. Look, that's not the same guy. It is guy. too, George. Quick, put your arms around me. Oh. Oh, all right, but it's so silly. Oh, Bunny. I thought we'd have to wait until next year to go on our honeymoon. But I think this is wonderful. Yes, Bunny. I will marry you tomorrow. Oh, brother, how crafty can you get? <laughs> uh, come on, Angel. Let's go get some lunch. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It was written by Don Clark and directed by Kenneth Webb. Ken Christie was heard as Lieutenant Johnson, Jonathan Hole as Larry, Louise Arthur as Sally, and Ted DeCorsia as Mike. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter. Your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. Let George Do It is heard overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. (laughs) 
This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.